Breaking news, my wonderful people. Sunday Boho is back. Yes, our very own brother Sunday Boho is back. Sunday Boho issues fresh warning to President Muhammad Buhari. Remember, he's still in Benin Republic. He has not returned to Nigeria. The money that was awarded him as a result of his property being destroyed by the Nigerian government has still not been given. In fact, he won the case in court, but the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the security agencies are arguing that Nigeria is in a very delicate position. They cannot afford that amount of money, but they can afford to give $1.4 billion to Niger Republic. They can afford to give $1 million to Afghanistan. God help us. What kind of a nation are we in, really sincerely speaking? How did we get here? And why are we quiet in the face of all the devastation being caused by these very people who are supposed to be leading this nation? Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like us, share, subscribe. Just in, Sunday Buhu issues fresh warning to President Muhammad Buhari. Yoruba nation agitator Sunday Buhu had told President Muhammad Buhari that last scale killings of civilians, such as one that happened during the civil war between 1967 and 1970, will never be allowed to repeat itself again. In a recent message issued by the spokesman Olayomi Koiki, obtained by Politics Nigeria, the Nigerian separationist leader alleged that. A uh, premonition agenda by a particular tribe to destroy Nigeria will not be allowed. We will not allow it. Recall that President Muhammad Buhari had on Tuesday call on, called on political leaders to stay focused and uphold the utmost objective of the of the utmost objective of promoting the interest of the country, saying Nigeria cannot afford another civil war. Igbo, who is pushing for Nigerian to split, has reacted. His statement reads in part, We know President Muhammad Buhari is the patron of all the Fulanese network, even around the world. See what he's doing in Afghanistan, even in Nigeria Republic. But Yoruba land can never be conquered by Fulanese. No, not anymore. We will not allow it. President Muhammad Buhari was reminding Nandi Kano and Igboho of the massacre that was done during the Biafra War. The president should know that this can never be repeated again in any of our land. We have all woken up to the Fulani agenda. We know what they are planning. Although he's still campaigning for succession through dialogue means, Igboho has rema remained in the Bene Republic since 2001 and has not returned to Nigeria. So this is part of what is happening currently, my people. Sunday Igboho is still in Bene Republic, but so he's not in Nigeria, you know, he's in Bene Republic, but from there, his attention, his heart, his mind, someone who really cares for his people, has been for so President Muhammad Buhari. I mean, Igbo is sending him a serious warning. We won't allow this. No, you can't you can't uh, bring full anise to Nigeria and to say you want to come and conquer the people. We know your antics, we know what you are up to. We know, you know, for the fact that those who are supposed to be governors, those who are supposed to be national assembly members. You know, the Senate House of Representatives that are supposed to put a caution, they've all thrown it to the wind because of money. And some people still blame Esau. I wonder why you are blaming Esau. Now, in case you are wondering who is Esau, Esau was a man who sold his birthright to his younger brother called Jacob. Why did he do it? Food. Food. And again, what do you use money for at the end of the day? Is it not for the prestige, the affluence, the influence? what to eat, and what have you. The same thing all over and over and over again. People keep selling their birthright every single day. People keep selling what belongs to the nation, keep selling it to enemies all over again. Why? Food. And you tell me that, you know, Esau was somebody who says he's a useless man. How can he, because he was hungry, sell his birthright? My dear, if you know what your governors are doing, Esau is better than them. 
At least Esau sold his birthright, not the birthright of others. Your governors are not only selling their birthright, they are selling your birthright. What about those you put in the House of Representatives? Senate. They are not only selling their birthright, they are selling your birthright. So, in that case, in that regard, Esau is far much better because he did not put other people again okay, in a tight corner at the expense of what he wants. He was not that selfish. No, he wasn't. He was not as selfish as some of the people we have given opportunity to be leaders today. What are they doing? Looking out for themselves, not for the generality of the people. What's their business with the people? All they are carrying out and all they are doing, all they are particularly about is me, myself, and I. Oh, what a shame. Oh, what a disgrace. We cannot continue like that. You see this bad attitude that we have, okay? This bad attitude that we keep, you know, we keep carrying around. Enough is enough. It must come to an end. Once upon a time, every one of us must rise up to the occasion. We can't allow it. We can't allow it. You know, people know. For instance, in, in, in Kiyamu knows he was the one who took Tunubu to court in, 20, in 1999. Festus Kiyamu, the same Festus, yes, you know, that's the one. He took Tunubu to court. Why? The, the House of Assembly cleared Tunubu of forgery and perjury. And what did he do? He went on. So, you know, he went out in respective of all that is going on. He went on, you know, he went on to say, you know what? I am going to, you know, I'm going to ensure eh, that the, I prove to them that Tinubu, you know, is not, and he, and he took the matter not only to the high court, not only to appeal court. He took it all the way to Supreme Court. Though he lost the, court, the cases, but he, he made his point that Tinubu was fraud. The same person is a spokesman for Tinubu today. Not a different one. The same person. So who are we really deceiving? Who exactly are we deceiving? Who exactly are we deceiving now? Let's answer. Who exactly are we deceiving? We're deceiving ourselves, our own self, and nothing but ourselves. So the lies we are telling ourselves, we can continue to tell ourselves that lies if we think that is the way forward. But you and I know that at the end of the day, truth must be told. Okay? You and I know that at the end of the day, truth must become, you know, the watchword. Okay? So this is what is happening and why every one of us must do that which is absolutely right and necessary. God bless. Have a fantastic and a lovely day. Bye for now.